Now, stories number one is kind of, you know, kind of take people away from where they're sitting. That's the main point of my story is, you know, the longer the speaking engagement, the more I need to try to grab you out of your seat and try to take you and draw this, uh, I don't know, environment is maybe not the right word, but put you in this environment where you can almost sense where, where I'm at when I tell this story and to, to have the right details without giving too many details that take you out of your seat and kind of almost transplant you, if you would, into a place where you're, you're, uh, you feel like you're a part of the story. And then I want to take that story and then somehow I want you to get lost in that story and the fact that it is a story. And I want, at the end of it, I want that story to have a point that you didn't realize that point was going to match you know, the purpose of the message I'm trying to give you. But then you can see how that story matches that purpose at the end. An example would be uh, me learning how to snowboard. And uh, my kids wanted to get into snowboarding four or five years ago. And at first I wasn't interested. And then I was thinking, you know, here's, I got a five-year-old son who's up on top of this mountain. I better learn how to snowboard. So I tried to learn how to snowboard and, you know, um, so at the beginning, I felt like I was, you know, I was just a sitter. I just sat and watched. I'm just sitting at the bottom of the mountain watching. And then when I started snowboarding, uh, what I called snowboarding wasn't really snowboarding. I was skidding. All I would do was skid down the mountain. I wasn't necessarily snowboarding. Anybody who's a, 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 an advanced snowboarder or a snowboarder in particular would never consider what I was doing snowboarding. I was skidding, so I went from sitting to skidding, and then uh, then I learned, somebody spent some time with me a little bit, and I learned how to actually go back and forth across the mountain and get toe side to heel side and, and, and to do some things and to control myself and be able to stop, you know, and, and do different hard turns and, and all that stuff, and so I went from then skidding down a mountain to what they call in snowboarding, shredding, and shredding the snow down the mountain. So I went from sitting to skidding and shredding. And, uh, and so a lot of times I'll use that as an analogy for people that need to, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, in terms of Christian sh circles, you know, they're kind of sitting on the sideline and, and they, they look at, <laughs> they're looking at, they're looking at the, uh, the people in church and, you know, those are church people that are done. They're not a part of it. They're just sitting, you know, but then there's people that are sitting in the pews every Sunday and, you know, they got their church clothes on, they carry their Bible and all that stuff. And you know what? They're, they're, they, they're playing the part. But anybody who's really walking with Christ would be able to say, yeah, you know, um, is there any fruit that you got going from this? It looks like, you know, I keep seeing you here. But, you know, are you growing from this? But, you know, mainly they're just skidding. They're skidding their way down the mountain. And then you take that, that third level of a person who's, you know, in church and involved in a church, serves in the church, is part of a discipleship, is part of teaching the word, is making sacrifice to get up, has a vibrant prayer life and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Those are the shredders. And so that's something that, you know, I kind of relate one way or another. Hallelujah.